I'm excited to be here today, guys. Uh, Robert, already someone from the audience helped me uh, crush your bug on this title, so I'm excited to you know, share some more with you all. But again, my name is Janae Sick. Uh, we will be going over um, how to do testing with the chest and enzyme. And this is a light introduction into uh, unit testing. I wrote this talk for, um, for those of you who are new into testing or interested in getting started. And also those of you who um, may be um, uh, building React components and, and looking to, to test those. So a bit about me, um, I'm a front end developer at IBM, but I work on the Red Hat Marketplace team. I know that's weird, but um, if you wanna find out more about our uh, product and our team, uh, I've included that link in there um, in my slide, but essentially we built a marketplace for developers to explore, create and deploy container-based software. And um, my responsibility on my squad is to help create and implement React uh, user interfaces. So I've been there, I've been with IBM for about a year next week, and I've been in a nonstop learning mode. Uh, so some facts about me, I started with zero experience in unit testing and 3% experience building React components. Um, actually, no, that number is arbitrary, but the point is uh, this has been a huge uh, learning year for me. Our team works with uh, TypeScript. Um, I've learned how to do that and interface our data and write React components. And you know we work in a continuous integration and um, agile environment. So we're constantly pushing to production and nothing I think the most challenging thing for me has been unit testing. So I wanted to uh, force myself to get better, which is why I've done this presentation to do a deeper dive. And I wanna share with you um, what it's been like from a beginner's perspective and maybe give you some tips and stuff that might help you on your journey as well. Hey Janae, sorry to, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we don't see your slides if, if you started uh, sharing. Me, yeah. I have started sharing. That is so unfortunate. You guys missed out some really cool stuff. <laughs> How about now? Cool. Got it. Yeah, we are WebEx at IBM, so oh, all this stuff. <laughs> um, but you guys are here just in time for the agenda, which is um, we're going to go over unit testing, like the importance of unit, unit testing how to install it, run our first test, and if you have time, take a peek at what a code uh, coverage would look like. So unit testing, generally speaking, is um, it's, it's testing, it's a way of testing the smallest pieces of code within a system. So in context with React, it's taking a single React component and you turn it into a really small block of um, code that is called a test suite and you make, essentially make an assertion, which basically you're saying, this is what I expect my code to do when I match it with a specific condition. Um, and if it doesn't work, then you know you've got a bug. Um, and if it does, then you can go celebrate. But um, there are some downsides to uh, unit testing. You will have more code to maintain and sometimes it takes just as long to write the test. Um, but the advantages are it helps build your confidence in your code and um, it makes you feel more confident about what you're pushing out into production. So, um, and this of course can alleviate your time as the developer from manually checking code with every change. Um, Jest, uh, one of the frameworks that we'll be covering is actually a testing framework created by, uh, created by Facebook. And we will use it mostly for creating the assertions and snapshots um, It generates code coverage reports. Uh, it's really cool because it has basically zero configuration, works with TypeScript, and um, is highly recommended and pushed by uh, React. So everything's kind of built in already, um, ready to go. While Enzyme is a testing utility, it's also open source, created by Airbnb, not managed by them anymore. But the reason you'd want to use that is because it'll help you easily traverse your uh, nodes and your uh, code. And it's very similar to jQuery. Um, uh, so that I think might be appealing to some, some folks. And as for setup, um, it's pretty straightforward. 
uh, the I include a lot of uh, inf information on how to get this started, but I just want to point out that you do want to uh, set up um, an adapter to connect to uh, Enzyme and you want to configure it to the version of React you're using. You're going to do the, the usual stuff here, import your Enzyme, um, import components from the proper libraries, including configuring your adapter. Um, and then you can choose between configuring uh, like how you want your code uh, coverage, um, where it's collected from, where you want to put it uh, in your package JSON file, or you can put in your just config. I prefer package JSON so I could just have it all. Uh, I did create all of this and push it up into a repo so you can kind of take a look at that. Um, and then also snapshot serializer is pretty cool. It allows you to see your snapshots in um, kind of a not in a more readable layout. And we'll get more into that um, later. I built this uh, little component with the carbon design system. So that's open source too. And um, it's just a super simple form that oddly, weirdly, isn't really something you do with launch a modal instead of submit. But um, just I want to throw in some elements for you to see how to um, interact and how we will be interacting with this. So this is a, a very basic component, a React component, where we have just um, one element being, uh, being returned from the ATO form. And um, just really basic titles and stuff that you would see. The uh, companion to this is the ATO form.test.js file. And this is how you would get started with creating your tests. You'd import again uh, the usual suspects here. You would import a shallow um, handler from Enzyme because we're going to go into uh, the importance of those two um, functions. And then when you to get started with writing the test, the first thing you'd want to do is use the describe keyword or this function. Essentially, it just takes in a string and then. Uh, the callback will be the rest of the test, but I wanted to point out that the string, it's important for you to um, describe it in a way that's that's legible because you can easily get write a lot of code and get lost in what each test is doing. So the best practice is to choose one of the three categories describing what you're gonna be doing with that uh, component. So in this case, we're gonna be describing all the tests that will be rendering the ATO form component and then the next block is um, an it keyword. You're going to pass out a string as well. And in this, you want to uh, also describe exactly what this set, this block will be doing. And in this case, we're going to be creating a snapshot. And a snapshot is essentially a, um, a fragment, an HTML fragment, a representation of your code in HTML that's a, a snapshot in time of what your code looked like when you ran that test. So in this line 10, what we're saying is we're expecting to um, have passed in a shallowly wrapped ATO form component. And when I say shallow, I'm describing um, kind of the power of the testing libraries. Shallow allows you to render that component in a way that you're only accessing a small part with no children of that component. That's making sense. Um, and then we'll also talk about mount where you're fully rendering your entire component. And the reason you would choose between the two is that um, perhaps you don't want to test all of the component. Maybe you just want to test the title and you don't need to go through all of the component. Um, and that'll help you with your performance. So let's see here. Um, once you've, you've set up your test and you're ready to run it, um, you, do, you could do a, I'm doing, I'm using yarn for my test manager. So I would do a yarn test and a watch uh, just so that I could see, um, I can keep modifying without having to keep saving and reload, manually reloading. This will do it for me. But you can see all of the tests will pass. Uh, in this case, all it's really doing is testing uh, if there's a snapshot, uh, if there's a snapshot, and this is the first time I ran it, so it will match it. And then secondly is checking for a title. Um, so these are super simple tests that you probably wouldn't do. We can get way more complicated, but for the sake of time, 
we were doing these super simples. And as you can see, this would be a snapshot uh, result. So this would automatically, based on your configuration, get dumped into a snapshots folder. Um, and you'll see something, your, your component.test.js.snap. And this is that HTML rendering. Um, next, you'll see what will happen if you do change something and what will happen with your test. So as you see in line eight here, um, I changed our test subject to now read our subject. And if I ran the test again, um, then we would get a new view of this uh, result. We would get a failure. And you see all of our nice check marks, one that tur turned into an X on line four, because that's where we're having the problem. And then I'll go into a little bit more detail. We'll show you um, how your assertion is no longer right. It's saying, you know, we expect it to receive true, but we got a false. Um, as you see in line 21, um, that's because we, we changed that title. And it's pointing it out. I can't see if I can use this mouse. Okay, you can use your imagination, but that now says to be uh, true is now a false. So that is a quick snapshot. Okay. Cool. cool. Um, another way you, you can see how your tests pass or fail is there's a coverage report. If you've configured your um, test, you can check out this table after you run a test. Uh, it's not doing it. There we go. The most important line to me, that more, or the most important column to me is this last one that says uncovered lines. Whenever I see this, I totally panic because now I know that there's a problem. And so what you would do is go into your coverage reports folder um, and you'll see a fresh, uh, freshly run report cover here. And this isn't for this code, but this is just to give you an idea what that would look like when it's failing. So you, it'll highlight the line that's the actual problem for you to address. And if you go in and modify your code and make it work, this was what your test coverage would look like as a pass. And I'm always looking for that 100% because um, we have a 100% uh, test coverage where we work. So this has always got to be perfect. Um, and then my last component here uh, just will help demonstrate um, a simulation, which is another common interaction or something you would do to check. So this is the launch component. It's basically the one that would open up a modal. And you set it up similar to what we did previously. You describe what it's going to do. In this case, it's this set of tests will be um, the interactions for the launch modal, followed by what it should do, which it should open the launch modal when clicked. And then um, we set up our test by, you know, um, defining our wrapper as the uh, launch component in its full render, which is why we use a mount. Um, and then when we do a full render like that, we can have access to all the children nodes in there. So you'll have access to the button and that's what we're doing line eight where we're taking that uh, component and we're looking for, we're gonna find the button, which in this case there were four. So we're gonna find the first button and then click it. And once we do that, we know that it's going to, uh, based off of I've already gone to the code and load IEC, it's toggling a visibility uh, state. So we're gonna check for a div to see if that now says is visible. So we're gonna find that div with an ID of input modal. And we expect now that it will have a class of is visible. And so that should be true. Um, so I know it looks like I only have a minute um, but that is a super, super brief intro into uh, unit testing. I did this because um, I had no idea how to do it. And I um, have been very challenged with this. It's been fun, but there's definitely some, some struggling points as well. I mean, I hope that, you know, as a beginner, this might be something that will let you know um, it's not as scary. And there are a lot of great tools and um, a lot of help out there for you to um, get if you are stuck.
But if you don't want to download and install all of this locally, I just want to point out that Code Sandbox also has a lot of configuration set that you can run tests there um, and you can play around. And this is just some ones that I um, happen to find it might be, I think it's Kent Dots, uh, but you can find a lot of different uh, sandboxes there. Um, so yeah, these are just some of the quotes and things that I've gotten from my colleagues. And uh, I think the one that stands out the most to me was when someone told me, you know, writing tests will help you gain a broad understanding of your code base. Um, and it also can help you become a better programmer. And that's what I'm striving to be and what I strive to do. So that's why I put this much emphasis into learning what I know now about um, testing. So that's it for me. These are some resources. Uh, including contact for um, if you have any questions.